Hello ladies and welcome to today's show. I am very excited to be joined today by the lovely Maureen. If you'd like to say hello Maureen. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Maureen has joined us today because she is very generously offered to share her very real experience of those Thompson Method three golden hours. And of course Maureen we don't know but you can share a little bit more about how you prepared for that and what it was like implementing the key principles of the Thompson Method in that very special time. So thank you so much for sharing this with us and setting the time aside to be with us here today. Um, it's truly my pleasure. Um, any way that I can help another uh, mom or a future mom out there to feel comfortable in their own skin is definitely a benefit of doing this. So um, I came across the program because my mom told me I needed to toughen up my nipples to prepare Ooh, for breast ouch. Yes, by taking a toothbrush <laughs> to them. And I said, that can't possibly be right. <laughs> I mean, it's sad, so, but it's, it's, it's such common advice, which I suppose is on top of that mountain of conflicting advice that we're all heard and we've all been given during pregnancy. Mm -hmm. So I, I suppose now's a good time to address those that are watching that are pregnant. Congratulations, of course, from us both. But also we've been there, you know, Maureen has just said that was one little tidbit of advice she was given. I was given some terrible advice as well. So you, you found the program, I should imagine, through searching how to avoid having to scratch your nipples off. with a Exactly. <laughs> so you found this, this program, which we know is wonderful. But for those, those watching, um, what was your first impression of the resources? So I, um, I'm usually a little bit of a skeptic. And I was like, hmm, this program might sound a little too good to be true. Um, <laughs> But I did research on Dr. Robin to see who she was and, you know, why this became a thing. And, um, you know, and I was like, I don't know. I don't think a woman who's been in this mm. particular field for, what, 50 years would just decide to do this one day for fun. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I took the plunge and I did purchase the program. I basically skipped the free version. I said, you know, if anything, I can ask for a refund. Um, That's true. We do have a, a money back guarantee for the first 14 days. So it gives us that security, doesn't it? For something that we, mm -hmm. we don't know. Like you say, many of us have to be skeptical as well from purchasing online. So I should imagine you were instantly relieved when you didn't need that, that refund. So yes. I wanted to actually ask you, because I, I know um, from what you've told me about your story, um, that, that that first moment you met your baby was interrupted just a little bit, um, which I should imagine yes. was quite a little bit scary, especially having your first baby. Would you like to tell us briefly what happened and why you were separated from baby for those first five minutes? So my labor was, um, I mean, for me, it felt very long. <laughs> it was about 36 hours, which I do know is thanks, honestly, to the program. I do understand that that's right in the middle of the average first time um, mom's, you know, labor experience. Um, Doesn't mean it's not tough, though. <laughs> it's definitely it was uh, it was oh. definitely an experience. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And, and um, you know, I was exhausted and I did choose to. Um, have my baby in the hospital it felt like the right thing for me and for my husband and um you know with covid that was been going on we had him in october 2020 so in the height of yeah for sure a all very of that challenging time for all women giving birth no matter what yeah. they choose exactly and um so during the end um i did ask my ob for a little assistance because i was just so exhausted from pushing and everything. Um, and in that couple of moments, um, my son's name is Tyler. He passed his meconium in the womb. Perfect so when he was Tyler. born, yeah, <laughs> I mean, I guess better than on me. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, yes, that's very true, I suppose. <laughs> but I think just for those watching, if you don't know, um, I didn't know what meconium was. Um, it is a baby's first poo. So, um, of course, ingesting this can be quite a worry. 
So I'm, I'm guessing that baby had ingested some and they had to take baby away, unfortunately, to double check everything was okay. Now, yes, Dr. This, Robin this... talks and educates us um, quite regularly about understanding the APGAR score. You mentioned to me that you understood what this was. Would you like to tell us what Tyler's was when he was born? Yes, his first APGAR score was four. And um, Dr. Robin's principles is that if it's anything over a seven, you, you know, baby belongs with you immediately and all other tests can wait. Um, unfortunately, because it was a four and likely due to his meconium blocking his airways, they did need to take him briefly to clean him up and clear his airways. His second APGAR score was a nine. So he was immediately brought back to me because that was part of my birth plan and my request. And um, due to some of the interventions that I ultimately needed to have through my laboring experience, uh, he was a little sleepy, um, but he did have his first attaching to me about 30 minutes post wow. um, delivery. Which is it's amazing because so many women, <laughs> especially those who haven't been through the program, they, they worry that the principles of the Thompson Method are just in supporting women who have a straightforward labor, a straightforward birth, um, a baby whose APGAR score is seven or above. So they don't take in consideration how we are very supportive and even really encouraging for preparation for the times where mm -hmm. the circumstances can't be judged. And we don't know what is going to happen. We can plan as much as we like, but actually the key to your planning is having the preparation on what to do if it doesn't go to plan, which it sounds like Tyler liked to change the plan a little bit. So, <laughs> Just so a little bit. Tyler, Tyler wasn't in your arms <laughs> until the first five minutes, which which actually, relatively speaking, isn't that that long. Sometimes babies are unfortunately separated for much longer periods. So how mm -hmm. did you feel when you finally got to hold your precious baby boy he'd waited so long <laughs> to meet? How, how did that feel in the time between the first hold in the first breastfeed? Um, surreal is really the best word that you can use. Um, you know, they spend nine months approximately growing inside you and kicking you and <laughs> making you feel all kinds of emotions and things physically. Um, and then all of a sudden this 21 inch long, seven pound, nine ounce oh. creature. <laughs> That's lovely. It's in your arms, looking yeah, at you. It's definitely you know, a and... life-changing moment, isn't it? <laughs> Especially as a first-time mom, I think we will always remember that first cuddle. And then, of course, you said uh, a beautiful 30 minutes later, which um, thankfully you didn't feel the need to rush, um, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm assuming, because you had a bit more of an understanding about how baby works naturally with its own body. So yes. tell us how you felt more prepared with the resources that you've gone through on the program? So with um, the first breastfeed, I'm, I mean, I, I would be lying if I said that, you know, yes, it was only 30 minutes before he first attached, yeah. but um, yeah, I got a little frustrated. I was getting a little nervous. I yes, was, it makes you angsty, doesn't it? I'm really angsty <laughs> to do this, what do I do? <laughs> yeah. um, but I just tried to be patient and remind myself, you know, like all babies of all creatures, they're born instinctively to do this. Um, you know, and that is a principle that Dr. Robin constantly is reminding you is that babies have instincts and mommies have instincts and we need to listen to them because <laughs> they're almost never wrong and, and they really aren't. So I just had to kind of tune out the nurses and tune out my husband and just... <laughs> let my baby do his thing yeah. um and uh you know with the first attachment i um tried to apply the principles of fine tuning as much as i could which granted i couldn't really teach too much. <laughs> is how dr robin teaches breast to face the breast symmetry in the online program she teaches these methods um, to help relieve if you're already experiencing pain but to actually avoid breastfeeding complications mm -hmm. as well which is hard to do when you've never done it before, I should imagine, Maureen. And 
although it's uh, it's very new to you it's it's amazing to actually implement what you've learned from the resources and then actually do it so i'm really glad you mentioned that so you you're now experiencing this special first breastfeed now i know that you told me that you experienced some interruptions in those first three golden hours so aside from having that minor separation before the first breastfeed happened you were maybe being a little bit rushed by the hospital staff. There seems to have been quite a lot of pressure um, for baby to be feeding a certain way. Um, so you had to be checked, I think you said. You had to be checked by a consultant um, to see that you were breastfeeding up to standard, I suppose we could call it. How how did that make you feel in that moment as a first time mum? Um, well, apologies, I'll correct you. It wasn't during the first three golden hours okay. um, that I had to have this interruption to what was happening and happening well, because all the postpartum nurses kept asking me if I was sure this was my first baby and this was my first breastfeed because, <laughs> because it was going so well. <laughs> They'd never seen that before. How wonderful um, is that? Um, but one of the Thing, you know, the check boxes in order to be told that you can go home was to have the local lactation specialist on staff stop by and check things out and make sure that baby is feeding efficiently, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, which I love that word. Yes, and it would be very <laughs> interesting to know what those check boxes are as to what they consider an efficient baby breastfeeder would be. I suppose that's a topic for a whole other day. But yes, there's been a lot of worry, a lot of complications, a lot of challenges that have arisen mm -hmm. from these checklists, which I do believe are worldwide. Uh, but I do believe they're a lot more um, forceful. I think that the requirements are a lot higher for those that have given birth and breastfeeding in Canada and the USA. Yeah, so she um, came in and... I mean, the beginning part of it was fine. She was just, you know, sharing education about the physiology of breastfeeding and all of that. And of course, I think Tyler felt my stress because I really didn't want her in the room. I had to have her in the room. So he's kind of stopped feeding and was struggling a little bit. And then so she took that as an opportunity to put her hands on me and put her hands on Tyler and I'll use the polite word of guiding him in a not so <laughs> gentle so, manner. So forceful techniques <laughs> were were used with without yes. consent, actually. Without uh, yes. having to think about it. <laughs> My husband was even getting frustrated. He told me afterwards that he was very close to asking her to please leave because mm. he could see that um, Tyler was getting distraught and I was getting very upset. Um, but luckily, I don't know if she read the room or if she just had to go on to the next patient. Mm. Um, but she was like, oh, I'm sorry, I have to go real quick. Um, here's a nipple shield and I'll be back to check on you again later. This is just, I mean, the, the part that shocks me the most about this story is that a few moments ago, you were telling me how you went from midwives and other nurses in the room complimenting you mm -hmm. on your confidence <laughs> and I guess what we could call breastfeeding success, success for such an early breastfeeding mum, first time mum. And then within hours or days, you went to hours. someone <laughs> rushing in a bit like a, a tornado, shoving baby and you with her forceful techniques um, because she wasn't happy with what she saw rather than speaking with you and asking how you were feeling and doing, which Dr. Robin talks about so frequently with us, us ladies on the team. And then you were told that you needed a nipple shield. Now, I cannot even begin to imagine how much, not only lack of confidence now you have, but how much you're questioning yourself and doubting mm -hmm. your ability because a professional has come in and told you you're doing it wrong. So this was the point where things turned around for you. For a minor time, negatively, they changed. So tell yeah. me how you felt when she left the room. Well, I cried. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, we're laughing cry. now because we know how well you've done since, but it's just such a yeah. shame, isn't it? It's just such a shame. Um, it was very defeating to feel that way because um, I felt like we were doing so well. And the pediatrician, you know, again, doctors have to come in and do their 
Dr. Cox's pediatrician had come in and weighed him because, you know, they have to do that. And he had only lost 3% of his initial birth weight. And they were Which really impressed. Which is perfectly normal and perfectly <laughs> healthy and okay. Yes. And they were completely impressed by that because... Well, yeah, if you have a lactation specialist come in and use these forceful techniques, it makes it more challenging. And of course, baby's going to drop more weight because of all the trauma that's going on. Cool. Um, but yeah, it, it resulted in a bit of um, nipple trauma with the technique that she used. And it's crazy to think that just those few moments impacted it yes. so much. Wow, I can you so know, relate and, to that. Just, yeah. just one, um, one lady, one bit of advice changed it for me completely. And like you said, it just knocks your, com you just feel so defeated, doesn't it? It knocks your confidence and it does, it makes you turn the corner and sometimes unfortunately not in the best direction either. So you did the prenatal classes and you mm -hmm. we were feeling really confident, but in your vulnerable state, actually you found it hard to advocate, rightfully so, and, and actually... I think the important part here to remember is that you were you put your trust into a professional rightfully so and things took a turn for the worse which which does happen we can never avoid things happening we can't plan for everything so how did it feel for you coming away from there you're now on a nipple shield baby's feeding from a nipple shield you have a not lack of confidence and you've got some some breastfeeding pain now as well how did it feel to be able to turn to the team in the club and to then revert, revert back to those resources and, and then make your first steps in the journey towards recovering from that tr pretty traumatic experience, really. Um, well, while I was still in the hospital, I did um, reach out to the admin team to- Wow, whilst you were still get... in hospital. Yeah, yes, thank God for phones. <laughs> yeah, yes, very true. <laughs> and thank God for our admin team. Yes. <laughs> Super wonderful. Um, and there were some amazing women that I um, am so grateful for that led me to several videos that I could watch at my convenience, um, which is one of my favorite things about the program. Just yeah, a tidbit. It's so many videos and you can access them as many times or as little times as you want as often. And, you know, at 2 a.m. or at 2 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> 2 a.m. best speed. Yeah. yeah, I've been there. <laughs> Very true. So I was very happy to go home and be able to sit comfortably on my couch mm. <laughs> and watch all of the videos I wanted to watch and really give myself a moment to absorb the information again, even though I had watched it all before and I had, you know, some confidence behind and learned some of the things that brought me to the success I had initially. I just kind of had to reabsorb that information. Yeah, I mean, it's so uh, normal to hit bumps in the road, especially mm -hmm. um, giving birth in hospital as well, because, of course, the Thompson Method is so different to what many women are taught. So it can be hard to go against the grain, so to speak. But you did such an amazing job overcoming those minor challenges in the early weeks. Am I right in remembering that it took you just three weeks and then you were yes. off the nipple shields? Yes. <laughs> Now that is amazing because we know how um, the introduction of an oral device can alter the way baby uses their oral functions. So you did a very fantastic job weaning baby off the shield. And I know from sharing resources with women um, coming into the club, how um, really helpful those videos, those resources are in making that gentle transition because it is not an easy one. So congratulations. And how old is Tyler now? <laughs> He will be 18 months on Sunday. <laughs> 18 months, eh? Our pandemic babies, they're growing fast. <laughs> yes, they are. <laughs> and how have you found your breastfeeding journey and, and the support from the, from the club and, and the program education throughout your journey? Um, well, every time, you know, there's a, a new challenge presented, getting teeth, yes. um, <laughs> you know, uh, vaccines or other medical procedures that he has had to go through and you know just life growth spurts yes just life with babies <laughs> <laughs> you know how how to deal with all of that there's so much information that i've never felt um alone if you will 
Yeah, I've always, I think I can always felt like I come back to the pub at any time. And it's such a <laughs> it's such a unique and special community because the, it's just a trusted source, isn't it, of information and there's just no judgment. It's not like mm -hmm. other social media groups where you worry about what people are going to say and they're not going to get 500 different <laughs> pieces of advice from Nan who says to scrub your nipples with a toothbrush or to dangle baby upside down and latch them in an X, Y, Z position. I mean, we've seen it all, haven't we? <laughs> but thankfully, yes. that's not that's not part of our community. So so hopefully we are connecting with women today. Maybe they are first time mums, Maureen, like we were, and they are clueless. I mean, I know I was. Or maybe they're feeling super prepared and they're feeling confident. Um, what what would you say to women that are sitting on the fence maybe about joining this incredible program? Um, what would you say to them right now? Even if you joined and you felt like you knew everything you needed to know about your body and your baby and the experience that was coming your way, there are ups and downs of life that no matter how much you prepare, you're not going to have the answers and you're not going to be prepared. Very true. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you might not use it today. You might not use the program in a week from now or a month from now, but three months or four months from now, there might be a moment where you're like, I don't know what to do. And here's your opportunity where now you can make your first post and you can ask those questions because yes, I remember my Robin has post. shared all of her knowledge with us. <laughs> and, and what would you say to someone that's pregnant? Why, why do you feel it's important to, to be prepared for breastfeeding during pregnancy? I mean, we can both openly admit how, how we easily focus on our birth and that birth plan when we're pregnant, especially as first time moms. So why should we focus on breastfeeding as well? Um, well, I really feel that people put such an emphasis on the birthing experience because of the medical system that's in place and they don't want anything to go wrong with bringing your baby into this world. After that moment happens, um, I mentioned this word previously to you, but I feel that women are so underserved because it's assumed that this is a natural process that we do and there's no need for anybody to educate anybody because yeah for sure or, or the education that you do get actually harms rather yeah. than helps and, and I just want to repeat that word you used <laughs> because it did blow my mind a little earlier you said that women are so underserved and i also feel like we're undermined and we're under supported mm -hmm. because we, we, we don't know what we're doing. It might be the most natural, the most beautiful thing to do in the world. But it's, it's almost like if you can't attach to it quickly, if you can't achieve that breastfeeding success in those early days, that's when the coercion starts. And that's when so many women are encouraged to, to give up. They're forced to give up. Dr. Robin's research so, shows that the number one reason so many of us are forced to give up is because of breastfeeding and nipple trauma. And it can be so easily avoided with preparation during pregnancy. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm so grateful, even though you did have a few bumps in the road, you did have a few interruptions in those three golden hours, you were able to breastfeed and you're still going, aren't you? You're still enjoying your yes. precious journey. <laughs> and I'm, I'm really happy that that's, that's how it went for you. Yes, I um, really couldn't be more grateful for the knowledge that's available at my fingertips, really. Yeah. It's like a midwife <laughs> in your pocket. <laughs> yes. <laughs> kind of With the whole lot of patience. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess uh, when you went through teething with Tyler, I, I know that I did with Jacob. I used the pregnant, uh, sorry, the breastfeeding Q&A library quite a lot because mm -hmm. you can just search a topic and an age, which makes it so satisfying and pop up lots of videos and questions from the Q&A sessions in the club. So I mean, there's just so much, isn't there? We're almost overwhelmed with the wealth of resources that are out there. But that's where I go back to saying that you're not alone when you have, honestly, the community. Um, because there's so many resources because there's other women before me that have asked the same questions that have gone through the same things. So even when you feel like you're at your most alone, 
you have this community to go to and you're not. <laughs> That's so true. I'm very, I'm very, very powerful. And I'm really glad that you mentioned that because as, as well as the resources, of course, there are so many. Actually, the support in the club is it's on par with how amazing the education is. The support is equally just as important because like you said, having all that having all that support alongside the education, having someone there on call, being able to point you in the right direction to say, actually, this video, this resource, this message might be really helpful for you in your unique situation right now. And that is, mm -hmm. I mean, it's unfounded, isn't it? It's very special, the community we've created. So yes. there, there you have it. That That is such a small part of your journey, I know, um, <laughs> but such a relevant part. The first recipe, three golden hours, is questions that we get asked so often. What happens if there are interruptions as well? That is such a common question. So it's really good to know that, of course, there's always hope with the right preparation as well. You could be um, you could be where Maureen is now, celebrating her, going towards her breastfeeding goal. And I do believe you're on holiday soon, aren't you, Maureen? Yes, yes, I am. <laughs> there you go. I cannot wait. <laughs> <laughs> That's a wonderful end to the journey, I think. A very well deserved one too. So yes. I just wanted to let those of you that are watching know that if you are interested in Dr. Robin's online education, there is currently a 50% flash sale on. So do comment below if you want more information on that. Or if you're new to the Thompson Method and you just like to further familiarize yourself with us ladies, Dr. Robin herself and her very amazing methods, I encourage you to join our free Facebook group Maureen said that she didn't need to go through that. She just hit the nail on the head and went straight in. But some of you might feel more comfortable with just, just getting to know the Thompson Method a little bit more. So get in touch with us, connect with us. We love hearing from you all. And just a shout out to those watching with us, Maureen. Susanna says hi, our lovely admin, Susanna, hello. And then we've got a few others that are commenting as well. Thank you all so much for watching. Maureen, would you like to have any last words for the lovely ladies watching today? <laughs> um, actually, yes. The biggest challenge to overcome is to trust yourself. Oh, yes, absolutely. So true. <laughs> I still struggle with it now sometimes, but thankfully with, with us all supporting each other, we're easily reminded that that is mm -hmm. the biggest challenge. So true. A very good message. <laughs> thank you so much for sharing your precious story with us, with baby Tyler. And thank you for your time as well, Maureen. Thank you for having me. <laughs> You're very welcome. And we will be back next week. I'll be joined with Dr. Robin and we'll be discussing some very interesting topics with you all here on this page. So keep tuned. See you soon, guys. Thanks for watching.